German car, Miami blue color and Portuguese landscape in the background. Sounds like an interesting mix today here on Autogefühl. So far we presented you the Macan facelift as the base four cylinder, as the Macan S six cylinder and the Macan turbo, this top horsepower spec. One is missing, yes, the Porsche Macan GTS. Here today, everything you need to know in exterior, interior and the driving experience and Porsche actually claims that the Macan GTS is the sportiest Macan although it doesn't have the highest horsepower figure. Hmm, is that true? Let's find out together in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! subscribe to us if you haven't done so far and also check that you have activated the notification bell to the extended form that you always get our notifications also if you have already subscribed thank you so much for the long-term followership well here the Macan face in the front first of all yes all about the color in this case with the Miami blue the true Thomas blue color would actually be the sapphire blue which is a little bit darker blue tone a little bit more elegant this one here, the Miami blue, more screaming out. But we also have other colors for you here on location, just as a variety, for example, carmine red. And there's this chalk color, this rather matte gray color, also very interesting. We have a Carrera white, a Mamba green, also pretty much screaming out color, definitely very unique. And talking about the form, of the front we can see when you have a front view camera then you would not have just the straight bar here but there's then a gap in the middle so this car does not have front view camera but new with the facelift led from standard equipment and then option you can get the dynamic led lights you can also see the daytime running light here in a new form but again the main headlamp unit is also led now and it looks a little bit more modern the gts with a sporty lower front, bigger air intake and so on and also dark background in the headlamps but more GTS differentiation is A in the interior which we'll take a look at later and of course a lot of black elements all around the exterior. 4 meter 68 or 184 inches is the length of the Porsche Macan this mid-size SUV or compact SUV, depending on the definition in Europe, it would rather be a mid-size SUV because it's also on this mid-size platform. Then you can see the GTS models usually come, not with these, but standard with black wheels in 20 inch. A General Macan, General Macan, comes with 18 inch base, again then the GTS 20 inch and optional 21. Again, this typical GTS trim would rather be black wheels. We also have some shots for these. You can take a look at that. Here we have non-black wheels, or let's say dual tone. So we have silver on the outside, some dark gray on the inside. But this here has this spider design, so 90s BBS inspired, really cool design. So you can also take a look at how a GTS looks like when it doesn't have the all black wheels. 21 inch however reduces the comfort a little bit further so you have to think about if you go for these and speaking of comfort when we talk about the suspension well you either get the PASM that's the adaptive suspension which is with the GTS 50 millimeters lower than with the Macan S for example if you pick the optional air suspension which would be an alternative from this one here and it is 10 millimeters lower than the normal air suspension so both lowered and that's also difference to the Macan Turbo 
so suspension-wise, the GTS is indeed the sportier model than the Turbo. So, what else to talk about? More technology with the brakes. If we take a look at the wheels once more, so we either have, we can see it again here at the, at the different car, standard or white brake calipers. So you start with standard brakes, then the white brake calipers signalize that these are the tungsten carbide brake. It's Wolfram Kabit in Germany and this is a special coating and they can be white, these brake calipers, because they then don't have any brake dust. Pretty interesting. So it's actually better for the environment and better for braking performance. And optional, optional, yellow brake calipers. These are the ceramic brakes. Even more expensive, but not really that useful for everyday driving. They also keep the wheels clean, but the better price performance ratio and more suitable for everyday driving is indeed this tungsten carbide coating, the PCCB. Yeah, or just stick with the standard brakes they will actually also do fine. And that side profile, this typical Porsche shape with a round silhouette here, strong shoulders, not too many design lines. A Porsche usually plays just with one or two design lines and that's also what makes this rather simple design, very clean and still beautiful for a Macan. So a sporty line, although it is this mid-size SUV. The Macan facelift introduced this new rear styling with the light strip that goes all around the vehicle. So it's a very elegant design and even a little bit three-dimensional going in there. And that's pretty seamless here again. The GTS has the black elements in the lower part, also the black frames around the exhaust. Special sports exhaust standard with the GTS with four pipes. That gives you a little bit more boost with the sound. It's of course also a big difference if you would compare it to a four-cylinder Macan, just sound-wise. Yeah, I know, there's the Jaguar E-Type, which hoods open in the reverse way, but from current modern cars, this hood is one of the most spectacular ones because you have th these massive cutouts for the headlamps. Yeah, this is really interesting. And they leave this huge gap in here, has been all the way with the start of the Macan and the reason is let me close it again so you can have everything here you know very seamlessly integrated the headlamps then you know are surrounded by, by these and you don't need any split anywhere else so this leads to a more seamless design very interesting well about the engines you know you get this two liter four cylinder engine for the base Macan and the Macan S would be a 3 liter V6 and then here the 2.9 liter V6 by turbo then instead of single turbo for the GTS and the turbo here in the GTS has 380 horsepower now so been upgraded 440 it would be in the turbo so this is also slower in the acceleration than the turbo with 4.7 seconds about half a second slower but still the other features are sportier than with the turbo. That's actually pretty really, really, It's just the acceleration that's a little bit slower. Seven speed PDK, so that's a dual clutch transmission. And of course, all wheel drive with a rear wheel bias. And this facelift GTS is, of course, also faster than the pre facelift GTS with the old engine. Here, 0.3 seconds faster than the acceleration. Let's take a look at the interior together. First of all, door closing sound. That sounds quite solid, doesn't it? The GTS on the interior is characterized with a lot of Alcantara use, so this microfiber material, non-animal surface, also some stitches right there. In this case we have this dark brushed aluminum inlet that looks quite fancy and also has like a matte feeling to it. Then black Macan GTS entry badges. And we have my favorite Alcantara steering wheel. It's really cool, you have a good grip. It's warm in winter 
it's cool in summertime. It's a big advantage. And there are also special cares for it when you are afraid that it gets, you know, ugly faster than with the slick surface. As I said, there are special care instructions for that. And it's longer lasting than you think. So I would always go for the Alcantara steering wheel. It just brings you so much more joy in your everyday driving life. Seats, eight-way sports seats are standard for the GTS. And again, a lot of Alcantara use in the middle. Uh, and on the outer, there's a mix of leatherette and real animal skin. If you want less animal skin, more sustainable, then go for the base Macan seats, which also come with Alcantara, but then all the way with leatherette on the outside. That's an interesting fact. So the most sustainable seats are the base Macan seats. In the second place would be then the GTS seats right there. And indeed, this interior is the sportiest interior, together actually with the base um, interior, because uh, on you know these microfiber surfaces, you don't slide so much, especially if you drive a little bit faster. Everyone knows that in racing sports, Alcantara or microfiber is used all the way and not the slick surfaces. And now let's get inside. No shoe tap today because it's just dry asphalt here. And it's indeed a nice and cozy seating position. However, this Makani, if we compare it to other SUVs, it is this rather cramped, sporty feeling. So it's not like an open, spacious feeling. That's again the Porsche philosophy. And these sport seats, they are actually pretty tight so if you want the more open seat for more comfort then again the base Macan or the base seat which you get in normal Macan or Macan S for example would be way to go so this is again if you have a more sporty approach to that and also appreciate this you know sportier caged in feeling one is 86 or 6 with one and without the panoramic roof there's plenty of headroom left even with the panoramic roof, it will still work, no problem. You have a lot of adjustments here, for example, for lumbar support, and then told you eight-way sport seat, so you can also adjust actually the tightness of the seat a little bit. So here you can make it a little bit more open, or you can close the bolster, so to say. So it is somewhat adjustable, and even the front part of the seat right there for longer legs, that's of course coming quite handy. When we are here already, you can see the key is left next to the steering wheel, a typical Porsche thing. Right there, this is the car key. Light and has this 911 form. It is somehow special to put it left next to the steering wheel. Then again, you can say, why do you have to put it in and turn anyway? Uh, well, their philosophy in this case is that you still have some interaction with the car, you know, that reminds uh, you of turning an extra key although technology wise it would not really be necessary anymore then the steering wheel can be turned up and down in an electric way and also in and out and again it's very compact really sporty as for the grip you have this shifting pedal left and right and also with a very crisp feedback and you also have controls here for the volume for example left and here picking up the phone and so on and of course the famous driving mode selector here right on the steering wheel so you don't have to search in the middle console it's easier than to change the driving modes while driving interior overview with the horizontal stress when you have the sports chrono package you also have the analog clock right there this 11 inch or to be germanly exact 10.9 inch screen comes with the facelift also with the apple carplay integration also wireless now soon a little bit more deals to the screen you still have this manual volume knob for example here and some physical hotkeys for example to the gps and so on um, i just wonder you know i would have like the gps hotkey right, right and left to the driver and not like they have to go around shifting lever which is covered with alcantara um, then in the lower part you see this is pretty much old school. Some love it, some don't like it. You have for example the temperature control still manual. I like to have it still manual although this is a rather weird way to do it because it's a little bit complicated. So um, temperature controls just with round dials are always easier to use. And then for example also seat heating that is quite well um, accessible and in the lower left part here you have the PASM settings so you can change the suspension modes if you would have the optional air suspension it would be you know 
like here, then would you have would you, we would have four buttons here, and then there would be an optional um, lowering down button for the air suspension. And on the right side, for example, you have this exhaust button where you can put the um, extra valve to it. But meanwhile, they closed this you know log gap, so it cannot be louder anymore than without the button. Before manufacturers were cheating and they made the car louder than allowed with pressing the button but could still get in the regulation because without the button it would have still you know um, would be com um, complied to the rule nowadays everything is according to the rules so this law is a little bit fixed now then more in the lower part 12 volt power supply inside and the beautiful alcantara cover as well for this middle armrest and when you put it up then you have your connection modules right there which go with the USB-C now and there you connect your CarPlay but again you can also make it wireless or even an inductive charging platform is there too. The instruments are rather classic, remember the Macan is on the old Audi Q5 platform. You see here the instruments all analog in the middle, left side for the speed as well and on the right side there's the only digital gauge and it's actually quite nice because you can switch for example also to a GPS view in there so here we go and then you can see something of that rather in your line of sight so the infotainment system you can see here the CarPlay integration and the sound of this optional Bose sound system is really very you know full of nuances you feel the different levels uh, well that's really cool so happy with that of course, the base of the Bose sound system is usually quite heavy, so you maybe need to turn it down if that's a little bit too much for you, but you can also adjust it in the equalizer. Other than that, um, this infotainment system being controlled rather with the main menu on the left side. You can individualize everything, phone, either via CarPlay, Bluetooth Classic would also be possible. Um, you have different apps from Porsche available, but I'm not sure if anyone is using the, uh, these apps. The GPS looks like this here at the racetrack of Estoril in Portugal. Pretty famous Formula 1 track, I think, till 1996 uh, they raced Formula 1 here. And so it's quite responsive and also good as for the visualization. Actually, easy and straightforward to use this new infotainment system. One of the best benefits of this facelift Macan. So in two more features next to the steering wheel I want to show you, you see this is one of the older Porsche with the indicator. Rather use them for the turning in like this just for like clicking without the resistance. Then it's for like three seconds or something. But if you want to, to use turning in for a longer time, you really have to go above the threshold. And it's like so weird. That feels so cheap and so badly done. That's one of the weakest features of the older Porsches. It has been improved now with all new Porsches, like with the Panamera, the Taycan, and the new Cayenne, and so on. But here it's still the rather weird one. And another cool feature is hidden behind the steering wheel, one of the best winter features. Here, the heated steering wheel can be activated, like here, with nice clicking sound. So if you have the heated steering wheel, which I would go for, one of the options for winter time, then here it is. And especially the cool combination Alcantara steering wheel with heated function that's also quite rare. Accessing the rear, well the Macan is let's let's say the most practical Porsche overall in a case of it's not too big on the exterior maybe as the Cayenne this one is still somewhat city suitable but still offers some decent room on the interior that's why the Macan is the most sold Porsche now worldwide and maybe you want to know as a four-cylinder, the four-cylinder Macan is the worldwide Porsche bestseller nowadays. How times can change, actually. But here the GTS model also comes with the Alcantara inserts and the rear seats. So also the rear compartment looks quite sporty. With the facelift, you also get a new USB supplies in the middle console right there. In this case also, it should be USB-C, right? It is, yeah. <laughs> pretty tiny to look at it from here but that's also something new that came with the facelift and also at the rear door you can see you have the brushed aluminum effect again and everything is wrapped tightly and more microfiber at the inside of the doors I mean at this price point I think we can also expect that thinking about that the base Macan is yeah something uh, 60,000 and 
Then you have a Macan S with 65, the GTS more towards um, the 80s areas in euros or dollars and the turbo then at 90. Yeah, and then you have like 10 to 20k extra equipment that usually come on top because with Porsche so much is extra. But what about extra leg space? Do we have some? <laughs> Let's get inside. Here we go. And this does exactly fit when I have the seat as I would be seating like this. So some space in front of my knees left. Headroom also no problem. This is of course in this case better when we do not have the panoramic roof. Here also we have the microfiber headlining in this very vehicle. And indeed it's an upright cozy seating position. So you get along in the rear very well also as a tall person. Isofix at the outside parts. Then you already flip the seats from here. Two third, one third split. And the middle part is an armrest with adaptive cup holders. And there's also a ski hatch available if you just want to load things through in the very middle. Has always been special with the Macan to open the rear hatch right there below the wiper blade. That's, you know, a unique feature and a good integration. You have to know it, but then it does save some space and some weird design element somewhere lower or something, so clean solution. There we go. And the liter capacity is 500 to 1,500 liters. Good square dimensions, some space underneath. There's the optional Bose sound equipment. You can also fit a replacement tire right there. And let me take some measurements. The length is about 94 centimeters in the middle, uh, sorry, in the side, and yeah, 98 in the middle. And width about standard one meter, a little bit more, and the height here to the cover is about 45 centimeters. So, what about some sample piece right there? So that you can see how it can fit the luggage in, and it also fits here in a vertical way under the cover that works as well and to flip the seats no possibility to do it from the trunk you have to go around and then do everything from here so like this this is then the 132 third split you can see or then use the ski hatch again but overall well usable and that's again the reason why you get a porsche badge together with a high amount of practicability of course, there are some other cars which use the space better. For example, when you think about this Cupra Attacker. So, 1 meters 70. That's the total length. And I think most of the stuff you want to transport in everyday driving life, you can. Welcome to Thomas's active driving lounge. We put that one to sport mode and the exhaust note is also active and we can also put it to the PSM Sport dry road here today and in this setup we can also do a launch control when no one is coming and please don't repeat. Well, that was a hole. So now I won't push it all the way through but at least in the first acceleration. Let's go. Whoa, that was already a little bit more than 70 kilometers. <laughs> wow, that was what a big push, right? And that was also, you know, like significant difference um, to the other Macan models. Um, of course, yeah, the turbo offers that as well, but there's like, whew, so that this is a significant push, really. And you also feel this all-wheel drive acceleration. Also have this all-wheel drive meter mounted right there. I can see that mainly is the power with the rear wheels but the more I push the throttle again more to the front and with the launch control you also have a nice even distribution so wow I was quite serious definitely now we have a nice curvy road in front of us and we can use all the potential of the GTS here with the PASM the adaptive suspension and the 21 inch wheels that's means we got this with comfort when we have some uneven road here and there uh, put some comments to that. So that's well, actually quite okay, but again, if you want more comfort, go with the 20-inch wheels and air suspension setup as for that. Quite good feeling for the brakes too. And the thing is, you know, when you drive here at about 70 kilometers an hour, it 
it feels so slow because you are in so good control of the vehicle and you feel it could easily also go on the racetrack and wouldn't have any problems with that. Here with the 2.9 liter bi-turbo six cylinder you also have a decent sound definitely and in the sport mode more throttle input better response and the natural driving feeling with that steering wheel is really cool. The greater grip with the microfiber surface, so that's a lot of fun to steer it around. And even if you go in some slalom commands, this really follows you wherever you want to go. Pretty cool. And they really managed to have this sporty Porsche feeling in an SUV. It's even more fun than in a Cayenne because it's just a smaller and lighter car. And so that's actually no wonder. And yeah, sometimes, especially when you have the GTS equipment, you feel like you would be in a put up 718 or in a put up 911 or something. And that's exactly what they intended to. Nevertheless, you have the more upright seating position and more comfort, yeah, especially when being in the corners. These Alcantara seats also help us pretty much that we don't slide around too much. Um, Long-term comfort-wise, I have to say that the base Macan seats give you more seating comfort just on longer journeys. The sport seats here, the upgrade sport seats, keep you, you know, tighter in the seating. That is good from, for cornering, but long-term comfort would be better in the base Macan. Um, so I already had these thoughts, you know, so when you don't know necessarily need the highest sporty boost and don't want to spend so much money then you can also go with the base macan and go with the alcantara seats there and then just live with the four cylinder which is powerful enough so to say but if you really want it sporty then of course you have the best performance here in the gts model together with all these sporty features and with the rear bias of the all-way drive, I also can accelerate out of the corners. There's a rear differential lock if you want to go really extreme. Plus, they also put in some torque vectoring here so that the speed of the inside and the outside wheel is adjusted. So that the outside wheel then in the corner is always fast and the inside wheel on the same axle here and then especially at the rear. And that also, you know, pushes you in and out of the corners a little bit better. So helpful. and so easily and precise I can follow these corners right here good always on the gas accelerating out um, the throttle input is even though in the sports mode not too aggressive by the way so um, you do need to press it yes but of course there's always power available no doubt about that let's see everything is safe right here other guys filming the GTS out. So um, there is still a difference um, to you know, like so some other like high revving sports cars. You need to give it more punch a little bit from the throttle, even the oil and the sports mode. There is also the sports plus mode available. That is then a little bit more extreme. So then you're a little bit better at the gas. So you can also adjust it, and at always you can also use the shifting pedals. So um, if you want to just go a gear lower, use your left hand and then accelerate out right there. So if you want even more RPM, just use the shifting pedals. They give you this crisp feedback. Really cool. Pull up, use the right hand then to shift up once again. And that's really so much fun. At the same time, mm, you're not too aggressive because this upright SUV seating position makes you relax in a way so it's a nice compromise here between having the sporty driving fun and still being relaxed in some true sports cars you have the great sporty feeling but then you always have like this oh i need to attack the next corner and here it's more like yeah i can take the next corner if i want to but i can also take it easy anytime i want go back to the normal driving mode and just relax again so and i think this compromise is, is really cool um, by the way, if you have this microfiber surface here in the GTS, it will adapt a little bit better to the body than with the very slick surface animal skin they do offer, that's already better. Although you have to know that these seats are still sporty optimized, so they are pretty stiff overall. So 
it's not the car where you would expect the best long-term comfort just have to bear that in mind and it will be a little bit better with the Macan based version so you have to th really think about what you really want what you really need and thinking about comparison to the Cayenne the Cayenne gives you more let's say elaborated feeling it's the bigger car less driving fun yes because you just move more weight then again the Cayenne offers a little bit more long-term comfort but again the comfort is not the uh, Porsche focus they really focus on the sporty driving experience and I can really say that driving wise indeed the GTS does deliver you the sportiest feeling also if you compare it to the turbo indeed I just turn around here because I also want to show you the rear view camera and the rover so nice so putting in the reverse gear there we go rear view camera actually quite good resolution helping lines also guide me and then you have still this you know true old school shifting lever which you know you put in like cluck that's somehow a satisfying feeling I know there are reasons for the shift by wire systems now for the DSG especially you save space in the interior it looks cleaner and this the switches between front drive and reverse and back and forth is easier to handle and more efficient it goes faster yet again to have this rather haptical feedback is yeah somehow just cool really nice to have here again when I'm in normal mode the car shifts up earlier so you don't have the best to drive out of the corners sport then you stay a gear lower and have a more spontaneous throttle input but with everything they did here with steering brakes and throttle they tried to feel less arcade like and more purist let's say old school sports car so you have to apply more power apply more power to the steering wheel than with most modern cars apply more power to the throttle apply more power to the brakes because nowadays with all these electronic helpers we are used that everything comes you know without much feedback and instantaneously and so on but here they really tuned it to a way that you still have some power input and I think there's also a good decision to offer something more unique as for a purest driving experience even though we're talking about the SUV in this case the Macan has become a little bit old school yes I talked about it earlier on this old Q5 platform they will skip the new Q5 platform for the new generation of the Macan which will be coming next year which will also come let's say predominantly electric but um, not only um, so looking forward to that then on this all new platform this will be very interesting but so far a lot of things what you can get here are still things you are used to for years and that might also be a purchase decision to get something intentional which is a little bit more old school together with these racing jeans here in the GTS now we're going a little bit more down here so I can test more of the brakes mm, sometimes I feel I would have a little bit better reaction from the brakes but that's again belonging to the scheme that you have to hammer one of the pedals a little bit further Golf 4 TDI Golf 4 was like you know pretty stable generation a lot of these has been sold and there was like a, a peak also in paint thickness for example after that manufacturers rather went to the direction where they try to improve the efficiency in production mm, so to, for example remove a little bit of paint thickness so that's totally sufficient but not too much money wasted and so on yeah and overtaking is always something very critical here so I only do that when it's really really safe also here on the right side you have to pay attention some of the routes go into the road and then they can get a little bit tricky when they're like really putting up the tarmac so sport mode is also there that you can do some faster acceleration maneuvers so when you have some kind of straight road and you know that there's no traffic coming ahead you can enjoy some more of the sound with being here that's like a good situation if I would have accelerated out right there it would have turned out bad really beautiful landscape here also um, in, in the Sintra mountains so it's cool to look at that emotional driving 
experience, so and after that we can pass. Oh, it doesn't accelerate out. Here we go. So there we go. So in this case, it can all sometimes be safer to have a little bit more power. <laughs> so yeah, when you're you know talking to your partner and say like, yeah, I need a more powerful car, yeah, safety reasons, you know, like safer to overtake and so on. Yeah. <laughs> so enjoy some more corners here together with me. I'm really enjoying it and um, I like the sport SUV approach in a way that you can have both the sporty and the comfortable somewhat experience with the upright seating position. That's what I find cool about this car and the GTS again if you wow look at that you know want that sport experience and just look at the degrees of the corners and degrees of the steering and that so very well fits and I would have imagined before that the 21 inch wheels PASM combination is too rough but it's actually okay but as I said earlier you can also fine-tune your your comfort wish so to say depending on the suspension and also the wheel size that goes all across the Macan range so again, not a fun here with the Macan GTS. Of course, as for the fuel economy, when we're doing more, um, you know, rides like these, yeah, more about that. Although I have to say, I didn't accelerate much, you know, it was more like rolling, agile. Yeah, some acceleration here and there, but it wasn't like a um, super unusual drive, uh, what I did right here. So, and some driving in, um, ahead, and this is like more 15 liters on one kilometers. That's like, yeah, 15 mpg something regions, something like that, 12. Um, if you really keep it steady, you know, we had like with the Macan single turbos, six liter, or with the four cylinder, more like nine liters, one kilometers, you could score that. 26 mpg US, um, 31 mpg UK, something like that you won't reach that with the 2.9 liter bi-turbo so it's more like 10 liters one kilometers plus um, more like 20 mpg and yeah less mpg or more liters one kilometers like you know when you get into some agile driving situation so the fuel economy is really not that good although they did a lot of like efficiency stuff here and there yeah that's um, the, the downside of the strongest engine here which will be the same for the GTS and Turbo, just differing in the house power output. Now some impressions from the motorway, where you can see the blind spot monitor, for example, right here. So there's flashing it here in the side mirror. It's a very good position there and good to warn you from upcoming vehicles. By the way, safety systems, Finally, with the facelift, the Macam comes with the autonomous emergency brake, but that one even not standard equipment, but optional. Mm, yeah, but at least it's already available then now. So in this vehicle here, we also have a cruise control, but it's actually just a normal one you can set like this. And there's also um, no sophisticated run of road protection here when you see here so um, the Macan again not the most technology inbuilt yet so assistance systems wise there's still you know some lacking you can also argue that that's more you know pure or driver focused but I think especially like for motorway situations and so on more assistance systems could actually be helpful it's really reasonably silent in here so pretty good you have this optional acoustic insulation package which is always built in um, every um, in every uh, test vehicle actually of course they want to make a more silent impression um, you can just understand that so that's also another reason why it's even more silent in here so at the same time you can again then for example put to sport mode and when you accelerate out here um, again from the next oh, just wait for another car to pass then. For the next um, taxation station here. You can 
just be a little bit more on the gas and you know that's that's a really lot of fun always. Spontaneous activation due to this bi turbo. Now can also be harden the brakes. And now also you see in the coder and the coder does that does like this. That yeah these brakes are really really Really, really good in the braking performance, also long term. Um, but you know, when I rate the, uh, you know, the tungsten, oh, these are tricky situations right here. Can be quite dangerous. So here we go. Good sound also from this exhaust and the port. And yeah, the thing is really that when you have the four cylinder. There's no real sound coming from that. You have to just say, you know, yeah. just driving the car, but not having this aggressive sound. Here with the GTS, of course, different. But since everything is so well insulated, you hear more sound on the exterior, even though we are already in the sports mode. Looking at the overdrive distribution here, even when we're just cruising or putting it back to the normal driving mode, there's still always this rear wheel bias and that's also the thing of this platform because it's still like a true all-wheel drive and it is the more equal the distribution is when you put a little more throttle to it of course just to even it out and to reduce wheel spin and so on even when you're just cruising here you do feel that you have the sporty setup the steering is not that light it's more set on a natural feeling that's all the different with the base Macan and the suspension is actually quite stiff. We have the PASM here, so together with the 21 inch wheels, you could say maybe it's a little bit too rough from time to time. So, if you want more comfort again, go for 20 inch wheels and also the optional air suspension. There, you can also then fine tune your GTS how rough or comfortable you actually want to have it. So, but in general, it's still suitable for the everyday driving life situations. Um, still, when you are in the GTS, you are a little bit spiced up, so to say. Um, it always gives you more racing touch. And one of the best elements for that, I can just it again, is this Alcantara steering wheel, because it always makes you feel, oh, yeah, let's go racing. And now to our conclusion for today, again Porsche Macan facelift and especially today the Porsche Macan GTS. The most important thing, yes, Miami Blue rocks still, at least I think so. <laughs> and of course even more fitting maybe to a Porsche Boxer for example. Well, in general the facelift brought these new LED lamps in the front, this new cool styling in the rear with the tail lamps and of course the new infotainment system the most important facelift changes. Then the Macan GTS especially also received this new 2.9 liter bi-turbo engine, the very same as the turbo has and I mean yes it has a little bit less horsepower but due to the suspension setup and due to this microfiber stressed interior it is indeed the sportiest Macan, I can agree to that although we do not have the highest horsepower spec so i think you know what they claim is exactly true in that case which macan to pick from because we presented all versions to now so yeah i mean it's a tricky question definitely let me just first sum up this gts for today of course it's cool to have the extended alcantara package that's also way to go for if you go for high spec macan and it's also a better deal than with the turbo the turbo, to be honest, is just an overpriced car for getting the highest horsepower figure. You already get the same very powerful engine right in here. And together also with the aggressive sound, with more black accentuations even, or especially when we would have the black wheels, which are usually coming for the GTS, then it would even have a more aggressive look here today, so you can also vary that. Which ride you want to have, how stiff or how soft, you can really vary that also with the wheels. If you stick with the 20 inch, it's a little bit more comfortable and you should probably then go 20 inch wheels, air suspension combination if you want the most comfort. And 21 inch, as we have here today, 
and with the PASM adapter suspension if you want the stiffest ride. So you can really pick it as you like. So which Macan is the right one for you? As I said, if you go for a high-spec sporty Macan, I think the GTS is the way to go to get most Alcantara on the interior and a more sporty, aggressive styling and riding feeling. If you want the best price performance deal, indeed it would still be the four-cylinder Macan, even though if some say, yeah, is it really you know, the proper thing to do? But if you don't use your Macan for daily racing, it will still serve the purpose and you have the Porsche feeling still, you have an agile driving feeling and the best price performance ratio Actually, the base interior is also the best one together with the GTS one. So that's also nothing, you know, where you would miss something. Some go for the Macan S because they don't want to pay too much money, but then already want the six cylinder. Yeah, maybe for the sound. But at the end of the day, I would actually say either, you know, go price performance, get the base Macan. Or then again, if you spend a high trim, more money Macan and want it sportier, then actually go for the GTS. That would be my evaluation after having you know, <laughs> dissected all of these versions. Please also join us for the other Macan reviews. We will all link them in the video description and in the pinned comment. And of course, we would like to know from you, which Macan would you actually go for? Or, that was recently a very interesting thought, Actually, so many people have written to me that they choose a Cupra Ateca now, or even switch from a Macan to a Cupra Ateca, which no one would have, you know, thought, because it's like 10k less than the base Macan, but already comes with more horsepower in the four-cylinder. So, also interesting, smaller choice. Other than that, of course, you have a Mercedes GLC, depending on the horsepower trim, then a 43 or a 63 from the AMG models, for example. You have a BMW X3 as the M Performance model, or than the true X3M if you go high horsepower spec up the turbo. And we also have these reviews if you want to check them out. So you can check this and also the Audi XQ5 for example or RSQ5 and so on. So tune into these episodes and please leave us a feedback. Thanks so much for tuning in today.